and showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode of the Channel Pro 5-Minute Roundup. A look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rich Freeman. I am executive editor of the Channel Pro Network. I am joined this week, as I am every week, by my co-host Eric Simpson, a business transformation and improvement consultant for MSPs and other IT providers. Eric, how you doing this week? I'm doing fantastic, Rich. Uh, it is a beautiful day here in sunny Southern California. How about where you're at? <laughs> well, I'm here at home in Seattle, and it is, I'm afraid, not a beautiful day. It is uh, pouring rain and very windy outside, uh, so it's a good day to be indoors and uh, chatting with you. Ah, well, at least there's some consistency in that, brother report. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know what? Here we are recording this on a Friday. It's been kind of a slow news week, um, so we don't really have a, a giant breaking news story to dive into. What do you do in a slow news week? Well, maybe you take a look at some uh, quarterly financial numbers, because we did get a quarterly update uh, this week from both Microsoft and Amazon, and of course the Amazon numbers include their uh, AWS service. Now, Eric, I'll be curious to hear what you have to say. Maybe this is just me. Because uh, I'm, I'm in the industry and I'm writing about this stuff all the time, but it, doesn't it feel like we've been talking about cloud computing forever? Doesn't it almost feel as if cloud computing is, is sort of yesterday's news in some respect? It's nice to be reminded every three months that actually there is enormous, enormous upside in the cloud still. And you could see that looking at the Microsoft numbers. Um, they reported uh, their Office 365 commercial growth was 31% uh, uh, in the second quarter of their fiscal year. Um, a dynamic 365 up 45% and uh, Azure revenue growth up 64%. Um, when you're a company as big as Microsoft, um, you know, obviously in a lot of very mature markets, you, you don't put up, I mean, you're doing a good job if you put up double digit numbers. Microsoft's revenue overall was up 14% in the quarter and that's good. Um, for a company as big uh, as Microsoft that's been around that long. But those are huge, huge growth numbers in cloud. And you only do that if you're still in the, the breakout phase of a technology phenomenon like cloud. AWS, their uh, numbers or uh, revenue was up 34% in their mo most recent quarter. So, um, you know, th this whole cloud thing, Eric, it's not played out. Um, there are still, uh, there's still plenty of room, and especially in things like um, Azure and infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. Um, there are plenty of software as a service products out there like Salesforce uh, that are growing like gangbusters. If you are, are not in the cloud uh, today, obviously, and I would think the vast, vast majority of people watching this are doing some cloud. They're doing Office 365. But if that's all you're kind of doing at this point, if you're selling licenses, you haven't really gotten beyond that into solutions, you're not bundling products together, you're not adding your own services, you're not maybe developing IP, there is a ton uh, of business uh, for you to be had, a ton of in, uh, growth uh, opportunity, uh, obviously remaining for the industry uh, as a whole in, a cloud, in the cloud. And uh, these latest numbers from uh, Amazon and Microsoft just really go to underscore that. Yeah, it is, it is very, very uh, kind of enlightening to understand that, you know, cloud, as, as you said, Rich, you know, is it long in the tooth, but holy cow, delivering dividends you know quarter after quarter year after year it's got to make you know microsoft and aws stakeholders and shareholders very very happy so not sexy anymore right we you cloud is ubiquitous and you know to to the folks watching um you know if, if you don't think you're in the cloud uh look again okay you're you're in the cloud accidentally you're getting drug into it somehow so I think the, uh, you know, what, what the takeaway message for me here is this is not, uh, you know, proof of concept stuff. This is not, oh, I'm worried about security in the cloud anymore. I mean, people are rushing to the cloud. And again, you know, we as technologists, you know, we're looking at the next bright, shiny object. Ooh, IOT. Oh, AI. Oh, machine learning. <laughs> cloud is probably trumping, you know, a lot of those uh, emerging services and solutions, you know, over time on a very consistent and predictable pace, I would say, right? So if you're not intentionally getting into the cloud, you're getting left behind. And if you're, you know, if you're denying the cloud, you're fooling yourself. It's part of everything that you do. You should embrace it and you should assume 
that your customers want it because I'm not hearing um, like I did, you know, five or six years ago, Rich, you know, partners coming to me and saying, help me overcome these cloud security objections. I'm just not hearing it anymore. Everyone is so, you know, and it's funny, right? Because the big news or the big, the big, um, the, the most important thing on every business, business owner's minds today is security. But I'm not hearing those same, you know, help me with these objections type of, of um, you know, consulting requests or, or questions being answered anymore. I think everyone has just accepted it for what it is. I think, and you know, that's dangerous too, because we're accepting, you know, data breaches now, right? Oh, Microsoft had a data breach. Oh, you know, Target had a data breach. Well, hey, I still went to Target yesterday. I'm still using Microsoft products today. So it's kind of strange that way, right? It is. It's true. I, but I agree with a lot of what you were just um, saying there. So first of all, uh, folks like myself in the media, terribly guilty of kind of looking ahead um, a little bit to uh, the next big thing, you know, artificial intelligence, IoT, et cetera, um, at, you know, well before some of these technologies we've been talking about for a long time are, are played out. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, uh, like you said, everybody is in the cloud, but I mean, it, there is growth to be gotten in on. And um, I would say, look at what you're doing now and look at how you can expand upon that. So you're selling off a 365, great. Most of your customers are probably not doing too much more than Outlook, you know, email online. Start looking at Teams and what you can do ar around Teams. There's tons of solution building opportunity there. The same story with SharePoint. Um, so, you know, look at what you're doing in cloud today. Take advantage of the opportunity to be doing uh, even more. And then look at the opportunities to get into maybe some of these areas like AWS and Azure, which are, you know, big platforms, very complicated and so on, but um, also a lot of different directions. If, if you pick a direction that makes sense and you commit to it and you make some of the startup investments that are necessary, you can build a pretty good solid book of business around these public cloud platforms. So there, there is a lot more to be done than what you're probably doing now in the cloud. Yeah, you know, Rich, you, you made me think of uh, some specific uh, scenarios where partners have come to me and, and asked me, hey, do you know of a solution that does this? And I'm like, have you looked at Office 365? Have you looked at the platform? It's like they're sneaking these things in like every quarter and there are so many solutions uh, that are available in there. I think that sometimes the partners don't even realize that there is more value in them introducing these solutions that the clients are already paying for and then setting them up and enabling them to use them and really, you know, building, you may not build additional revenue stream, but you will build that trusted advisor um, and strategic partner, uh, earn those badges and, you know, maybe even charge for some of these uh, projects to get the clients set up. I mean, there's a, I mean, let's just say that, that Microsoft and, and uh, Amazon and Google, I mean, they are all in, right? When you, you think about the poker game, Rich, I'm all in on the cloud. So, you know, Take a look at what's available. As you said, Rich, uh, be intentional about identifying these additional product services and solutions that are available uh, from these, you know, the big 800 pound gorillas. There's a reason why they're all in. And if you're not at the tip of the spear of that charge with your clients, um, you're not adding the strategic value that I would advise you to. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. And let's, uh, let's take a look at your tip of the week here. Um, now, let's assume that anyone in the audience doing managed services has a PSA. If they're using the PSA right, they got a ton of data in there. But your tip of the week has to do with uh, what you do with that data. Boy, I tell you, Rich, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me when I, when I engage with a new client to do some consulting on the service desk uh, or other areas of the business, and, and I, I do quite a lot of that, as you know, it never ceases to amaze me how often either A, they're not running reports to identify how they're performing in some of these areas, um, or B, um, don't know how to, don't know how to configure and look for the, correct, the data that I would recommend to look for in terms of analyzing performance and looking for low-hanging fruit opportunities to improve performance. So yeah, the tip of the week this week is all about, folks, spend some time in your PSA's reporting module. I want you to see this as almost as important as being in your financial dashboard on a consistent basis. Because 
the, you know, the decisions that you need to make and the decisions that I help uh, my clients make in terms of, you know, properly staffing and tiering service desk and even from the perspective of cost savings, you know, having uh, very costly dragon slaying engineers that are, you know, wizards of technology closing level one tickets. I mean, what kind of sense does that make, right? Not properly tiering correctly so that you're efficient and profitable at every tier. Um, looking at your total ticket count and understanding what percentage of your total ticket count, um, you know, per year are tickets that can be closed within one hour or less. Make that your level one uh, ticket incident management focus. So let's say that you've got, you know, what I, what I do, Rich, when I go into a client, I say, okay, what are the top 10 types of incidents that you deal with on a daily basis? Let's list those and we'll get a list and pretty similar, you know, across uh, most partners, what those things are. And then how long is it taking everyone to close those t 10 types of tickets? So you've got an issue type and you've got a sub issue type. It's a workstation issue. Is it an operating system issue? Is it a, uh, a, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a, a software issue like Office 365 or something like that. And what are the things that you expect to be able to be closed in an hour? And you'll, you'll come back and go, holy cow, why is it taking us so long to close these tickets? Well, typically because it's a wild, wild west. You've got four or five technicians or more and everybody's, you know, shooting from the hip and they're closing tickets the way they think they ought to be closed. Identify your top 10 issues, document how the incident management process should be and then measure the improvement. What you want is level one tickets that can be closed within an hour or better. I typically shoot for 45 minutes over time. That allows every level one engineer to close 12 tickets a day. Level one's job is to clear the queue constantly. So if they're spending more than 45 minutes on a ticket, once we've gotten to that point, I need it escalated out of there because if they spend 90 minutes on a ticket, guess what? Now they're only closing 10 tickets a day, right? So these are, this is math, these are numbers. Your level two folks should be the ones that can close those escalated tickets. Probably give them double the time, give them 90 minutes. And level three is whatever it is, because that could be a, a vendor issue, it could be a hardware issue, who knows. But once you look at that and begin to uh, analyze the performance, then you can start seeing trends and then you can start tweaking and tuning. But I want everyone to think about uh, level one tickets, maybe the first go around, give everybody an hour, that means they're closing eight tickets a day. You're using that math against your total ticket load, right? So if you've got way more tickets than level one can close uh, within an eight hour day, you're typically understaffed. But if you've got way less tickets than level one can close, you're basically overstaffed or severely underutilized. So the trending and the reporting will give you the dashboard you need to make strategic decisions to tweak and tune and make sure you're efficient and profitable every single billing cycle. And that, you know, the, these are the key takeaways here is, you know, first of all, if you're doing managed services, you need to have a PSA tool and, and you know, a good one. Make sure you invest in a quality product. Make sure you fill it with data. So you, you need to be rigorous about capturing everything that your tech's doing, uh, everything you're doing so that you have good data in there. But then most important of all, use that data to run the business. You can actually, instead of having hunches about what's going well and what's not, you've actually got data in that system that can show you where you are and are not efficient. Look at that data, use that data on a regular basis. And, and like you were saying, use it to drive strategic decision making about do you need more staff? Do you have too much staff? Are certain members of your staff um, struggling in areas that they can be helped with and you can train them? And I mean, you can learn a lot about how the business is actually functioning as opposed to how you think it is um, if you, you make good use of that uh, information in your PSA. And it is amazing, Rich, the improvement that, you, that partners will, will, uh, um, will receive simply by documenting how to solve those top 10 issue types and holding their teams accountable to following those processes. And, and of course, the technicians have to document every minute of their time uh, in the PSA so that we don't have this garbage in, garbage out scenario. But yeah, data, you know, making decisions based on a hunch in your gut, that only gets you so far. I mean, we've got to move into the data-driven decision um, mode of making strategic um, um, you know, choices and how we optimize and improve our service delivery and become more profitable. Uh, and when everybody's doing the same thing the same way, then guess what? 
when there's an outlier, why is this technician taking longer than everyone else to do that? Um, it's either going to be a process issue, a platform issue, or a training issue. You know, is there something, are they not following the process? Does the process need to be adjusted? Is there something in the platform that's preventing them from doing things quickly enough? Or ultimately, do they just need some more training and some more accountability? So Eric, you, you do a great job every week of coming up with a tip for our tip of the week segment, but uh, that's you, you know, figuring out what you want to talk about. There are probably some, uh, some topics out there that folks in the audience might like to hear about that we don't know. So what, what do you suggest people do starting now if they have a tip that uh, they would like you to explore? Awesome. Awesome segue, Rich. So I'd like to, uh, you know, introduce a new feature of the five minute roundup and I'm looking for everyone uh, that, that participates in our five minute roundup by viewing and commenting and things like that. I want you to feed us the things that you're having a challenge with and would like me to address during my tip of the week. So make it real easy for you. If you've got a pain or a challenge, you just want to explore something that we may have covered a little bit deeper, send an email to tips at ericsimpson.com, E-R-I-C-K-S-I-M-P-S-O-N.com, tips, T-I-P-S. And if I select your request to cover a business tip or a challenge or something uh, during that week's five-minute roundup, then I will send you uh, a link to download every single one of my best-selling books uh, as our thank you. And we'll call you out by name and we'll go through it and me and Rich will kick it around and we'll deliver the best response uh, in order to address that uh, question that you send in. So I'm looking forward to adding that to the five minute roundup. So, you know, anytime, anywhere, drop us a line and um, I'll select uh, every week and uh, the, the lucky winner will receive uh, a thank you from us in the form of a link to download all of my best selling books. So, that ought to be really fun and cool, Rich. I, I agree. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, drop us a line, folks. Tips at ericsimpson.com. You're, you're not only going to get free advice on whatever issue you're dealing with, you're going to get a bunch of free books. So yep. this is a pretty good deal. Cool. Uh, now, we have only got time for one more story here. And uh, if, you're, if you're in the media biz, folks, you can pretty much count in January. You're going to hear from the good people at Oscar Mayer informing the world that once again, they are hiring drivers for their wiener mobiles. Uh, and people like me, you know, talk about this because we love having an excuse to say Wienermobile. Uh, but it, it's, you know, been there, done that. Every year we see the same story. And uh, I was, in fact, conversing with a colleague. Eh, we're not going to do it this year. But there is a new spin on the Wienermobile story uh, this year. It turns out one of those vehicles uh, in Waukesha County, Wisconsin, got pulled over by the sheriff's department. Uh, they have a, a move over law in Wisconsin. You can't, you know, just hog the passing lane there. And uh, the Wienermobile, and it's a pretty big vehicle, the Wienermobile. It was uh, hog hogging, hot-dogging the, uh, the passing lane, and, uh, you know, they got pulled over. It got away with a warning, um, which is nice, uh, but I guess just the, the, the new little wrinkle on the annual, hey, we need Wienermobile driver's story is just, you know, make sure you know the local laws and obey them. We're, they're looking for safe drivers, folks. Yep, you don't want to be on that uh, Wienermobile APB alert either, so... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is uh, all the time we've got this week on the Five Minute Roundup. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you like the show, uh, want to take a look at some old episodes, make sure you know when the new ones come out, um, go to the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube and subscribe to the show. Make sure you click the, uh, the bell there if you want to get notifications when new episodes go out. Um, to uh, keep up on what's happening in the industry and get all sorts of great business growth advice, please visit channelpronetwork.com on a daily basis. We have got great content going out for you all the time. Uh, you want to learn more about Eric and the work that he does with his clients, he's got the URL right behind him there, ericsimpson.com. That's E-R-I-C-K simpson.com. Uh, Eric and I will be back next week with another episode of the Five Minute Roundup. Until then, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. <laughs>